been looking pretty much at kind of every tool that we have to support the pipeline. Grow your own programs are a very big piece of that. Um, we also see, you know, grow your own programs, as you've described, look very different depending on where you're talking about them. In some communities, it's around pulling from paraprofessionals or other adults working with schools. Um, in other districts, we've seen it start in high school and secondary school, and they've had career pathway programs and students have come up that way. Um, in tribal communities, they might look different. And not that you can't have these different elements in the same place, but we've really been thinking at, regardless of the approach that you take to grow your own, what are the ways at the federal level we can support that? And so one of the first things that we did in our COVID handbook was include on volume two a section on stabilizing a diverse educator workforce and specifically spoke to, spoke to how ARP dollars can be used to uh, support grow your own programs and other pipelines into the profession. Part of our Build Back Better agenda is a $9 billion investment in educators and everything from the pipeline through leadership. We see Grow Your Own as a very big part of that agenda. It's reflected in our FY22 proposal. Uh, it is something we are trying to get more directed funds for, uh, not only under the Teacher Quality Partnership Grant, but uh, through other opportunities as well. As we're thinking long-term, we are also thinking about how we can support the use of CTE dollars, so uh, funding under Perkins to support GYO programs um, at the high school, you know, the secondary level. Um, but to Maria's point, a lot of it is just letting people know, no, you actually can use these funds for these purposes, and also finding out if there are any additional barriers to doing that, as well as trying to get a significant increase in investments in these kinds of programs as well.